Welcome to the guide, Exile. In this guide, we are going to be looking at the masters within the Atlas. Our first and main focus is Zana, the master cartographer and daughter of the Shaper. She is one of the most influential characters of the endgame system and guides you through it via a questline. The other masters, Alva, Einhar, and Nico, will be touched upon briefly but will ultimately have their own guides. For this guide, you will want to have an understanding of the Atlas and maps, and you can find that information in the Atlas Basics Guide. But before we begin, I would just like to remind you that this guide was made in partnership with fellow content creator and Atlas guru, Karvarausko. You can find him on Twitch, YouTube, Twitter, and Discord, which I have linked in the video description. An important note, in every major expansion or patch, the Atlas can be or is reshuffled to add, remove, and change map location and tiers around. This reshuffling results in new map art, progression, and farming strategies. Unfortunately, due to this reshuffling occurring about every three months, I cannot rework every one of my videos to represent this as it would be way too much to keep up with. Luckily for us, the reshuffling does not change the base mechanics of the Atlas inherently, so all of the core rules, ideas, and general recommendations will still hold true. So for this series, I will do my best to use as few Atlas variations as possible, but to apply what is discussed in these guides to the current Atlas, just disconnect the names from the maps, and apply the general rules and ideas to the Atlas currently as it stands. With patch 3.5, the majority of old Forsaken Masters have fled and been replaced by the new roster, Zana, Alva, Einhar, June, and Nico. As can be seen, these masters aside from Zana are the prominent figures of the previous leagues, Incursion, Bestiary, Betrayal, and Delve respectively. This means that more masters could be added or removed based on previous league integration or necessity for another master. As for now, these masters have been integrated into the story as well as the Atlas, bringing out Atlas objectives. Atlas objectives are missions within the Atlas signified by icons related to each master that are placed around maps. The maps with these icons are guaranteed to contain the respective master and grant their mission. Here are all the icons for the current masters. As you can see, their icons heavily relate to the art from their respective league, aside from Zana, who did not have her own league. Zana offers a map with objectives to complete, Alva offers up to three incursions, Einar offers three to four yellow beasts and one guaranteed red beast, June offers three syndicate encounters, and Nico offers up to three nodes of sulfite. Master Atlas objectives will appear on your Atlas initially when you first unlock it, putting the objectives in lower tier maps. Since you have no maps completed, Atlas objectives can spawn on maps that you have not yet discovered or completed. Once you complete the subsequent master mission or simply open the map, the respective objective will be removed from your Atlas. Master Atlas objectives are guaranteed to respawn once per day, and have a chance of spawning naturally upon completion of maps. So if you were to complete all of the Atlas objectives for a day, you can still spawn more Atlas objectives by running more maps. There is a 20% chance upon completing a map to have an Atlas objective appear. Daily and spawned Atlas objectives will spawn around the same tier of the last map you completed on your account, similar to how Elder Influence spawns. They can also move around to the tier of map that you are currently running, even after they have spawned. Beyond the guaranteed Atlas objectives, a master has a 40% chance to spawn in your maps and offer you their missions. If a master is to spawn in your map, they each have an equal chance to be chosen. As of now, that is a 20% chance for each master. So with the Atlas objectives explained, let's move on to Zana, and more specifically, see how she moves us through the Atlas. Zana is the main link between you, the Atlas, the Elder, and Shaper. She will initially have you exploring the Atlas one map tier at a time before moving into the massive undertaking of delving into its center. With the recent rework to Zana, she is more helpful than ever to bridge that gap between the story and the endgame by giving the player guidance as to what to be doing. Her questline first focuses around the Shaper, who is the central focus of the Atlas as well as a very important person to her. For the first six tiers of the Atlas, you will be chasing around the mysterious influence that the Shaper places on one random map from each of those tiers progressively until it breaks free another force of the Atlas that is the Elder. From here you will be manipulating the Elder's influence to gain information through the form of memory fragments until you reveal the true origins and results of what has happened within the Atlas. We will be focusing on the Elder and Shaper influences in the next guide, so for now all you have to know is that Zana's questline focuses on these and that you must follow it to access the Elder and further Atlas rewards. The main rewards of Zana's questline are favor, maps, map device crafting options, and shaper's orbs. 
Favor is granted whenever you complete part of her main questline or mission found in maps, and is used to buy decorations for your hideout. Favor is applicable to all masters in their respective missions as well. You are able to modify the amount of favor gained through a few different methods such as prophecies of gracious master or a master seeks help, which multiply the favor gained from missions. The selection of decorations is dictated by the master's level, and for this case of Zana, her master level is increased by completing a certain number of maps within the atlas. Completion does not require the bonus completion. For each tier of map in tiers 2 through 10 you complete with Zana's questline, she will provide you with a choice of any map within the same tier as a reward. The first chosen maps that are within her questline are the Celestial Background Shaper influenced maps, and later the Tentacle infused Elder maps with rotating blue circles. This is useful for your Atlas completion as you are able to take maps you may have not dropped yet. For each completed quest in Zana's questline, you will be granted a new map device crafting option. These generally include league modifiers and map altering crafts, and are generally swapped around every patch. We will discuss these in detail later on. Finally, Zana also has another questline reward as mentioned previously, which are memory fragments that are obtained from bosses within the Elder Influence maps as marked by rotating blue circles. We will be covering these in depth once we get to the Atlas Intermediate topics, as they are heavily tied to Atlas Influence mechanics and bosses within the Atlas. But to suffice it to say, these memory fragments will progress your questline with Zana, as well as specific tier Shapers Orbs that can increase specific tiers of maps by 5 levels within the Atlas. As with all the other masters, Zana has her own special missions that she provides outside of her questline. She can be found randomly within maps, or you can seek her out at her Atlas objective. The map tiers that she will offer will be the same tier or one tier higher than the current map that you are in. Unique maps offered by Zana's missions are always the same tier as a unique map normally would be. She will offer a selection of pre-rolled maps to you, allowing you to choose between them, basing your decision on which one has the best combination of layout, modifiers, and mission style. Since Zana is also able to offer unique maps, this is one of the only ways that you can encounter the unique map Untainted Paradise. An important note here is that all of the maps that Zana offers will count towards your atlas completion. This is incredibly helpful for filling out your atlas initially. Zana has many selections of missions along with what maps she offers, and most of them are easy to dismiss as poor or not rewarding. However, there are a few selects that are quite valuable in many different ways. Missions for completing the Labyrinth Trial are great for the beginning of the League to get your Eternal Labyrinth prerequisites met. Open the Breaches and completing Abysses are also great for more density and rewards from those respective Leagues. Other missions, such as find the unique item or divination card, may sound intriguing, but for the most part, will fall very flat due to the chance of actually getting anything good. All in all, these mission types won't sway you very far in any direction in terms of rewards, and I always recommend going with the best rolled map in terms of quantity and pack size once you reach red tier maps in the wild, so that you will sway your map drop rates in your favor. As we talked about earlier, Zana offers crafting options on her map device as you complete more of Zana's questline. Aside from the basic percentage quantity modifier on open maps as based on Zana's level, crafting options usually include modification of map bases, monsters, or addition of league modifiers at a cost. For the most part, these are great methods to get more quantity and returns from your maps, with some modifiers being better standouts than others. Unfortunately, these modifiers rotate in and out each patch, with some of them being directly altered. So there's never just a go-to use this one, but we can speak to some of the existing modifiers that have been available at one point to give an idea of what to look for. Here are some of the prior Azana map device modifiers. The special base modifiers are really useful for initial atlas completion, allowing you to complete maps that you may or may not have yet to run, or possibly even run a higher tier of map that you don't have. I highly recommend making use of these, especially the alternate of the same tier, when starting a league especially if you are doing minimal trading with other people or are solo self-found. The staple selection of Zana's map device modifiers is really to add an old league to a map, bringing along not just the league mechanics and or monsters, but the ability of dropping or chancing a unique specific to that league. Now the ability to obtain league specific uniques is exclusive to Zana's map device modifiers, or a special league mechanic from GGG like Legacy League, and not the affixes on a map item. So for example, if you were to use a map with the rare monsters each have a nemesis mod, you will have rare monsters with nemesis league modifiers on them, but you will be unable to obtain any of this league's exclusive uniques. 
If you were then instead to use or add the Zana map device modifier Nemesis to a map, then you will be able to drop or chance that league's exclusive uniques. You are also able to stack the map affix and the league specific modifiers from the map device together. So you can have both parts of these examples put together to get even more rare monsters or another map modifier, possibly like Double Beyond. We will discuss when to be using these modifiers over the next few guides, but in general, certain modifiers are great to help push map sustain and experience gain. They are generally used in well-rolled red tier maps to justify their cost. Touched upon briefly earlier in the guide, Zana has a shop in which she sells maps. She offers a various map bases at varying rates, generally in chance or alchemy orb prices. She will offer higher tiers as you progress further through her questline. She will offer all the way up to tier 16 maps by the end of her questline. Her shop stock will refresh when her daily atlas objective is spawned, a random atlas objective map is opened, or when a part of her questline is completed. This is an important feature to remember as refreshing her shop will bring in new selection of maps, hopefully providing you with new options to choose from to further your atlas progression. Do not overlook this feature of Zana as it is incredibly useful in the beginning of the league and in solo cell phone. So, we have covered the Atlas Basics, Map Crafting, and Zana, and we are now raring and ready to get to some of the heavy hitting topics. Next we will be looking at all of the intermediate topics of the Atlas, including but not limited to, influence, sextance, and shaping. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one, Exile.